Hello, I'm Otu Joe, and today we are going to talk about the top 10 bicycles related to Masters of the Universe. We're going to see bikes from companies like Murray, Estrella, Vivi, oh, what else? We got? Roadmaster. We also have companies like Tonka, as well as a Tonka Headstrom Hybrid, and a couple other surprises. So stay tuned, because that's coming at you right now. <laughs> Yes, we are going to talk about bicycles. Bicycles related to Masters of the Universe. One of my most favorite subject matters. Uh, but we better clarify too. Bikes for this review mean foot powered. So that could mean you pushing along with both feet. It could be actual pedal power. Uh, it could be a tricycle. So all of these things fall under this bicycle review. And to be fair, top 10 is a little bit of a uh, <clears throat> marketing ploy because there are only 10 bicycles, according to this definition, that are available. And again, this is just some fun. This is my opinion on review of some of these bikes. I'm very fortunate. I'm, I own five of these things, and I love them. So I thought, let's do this. Let's share some knowledge. Let's share some good pictures. And hopefully, in truth, let's get some answers solved. Because even though I own five of them, there are some mysteries still to be solved pertaining to these bikes. And we'll get to that throughout the review. So if you haven't already, hit the subscribe button. Hit the little bell to get alerted as soon as we go live because part of this channel is going to be live content. Although this is pre-recorded, please stay tuned for further live things because I love to do unboxing and we'll share that content with you. So without further ado, let's get into the top 10 bicycles for Masters of the Universe, starting off at number 10. All right, coming in number 10 is the double tube. And what we mean by double tube is this right here, double tube frame. This is the 1983-84 Murray. Let's take a look at the front badge. Battle cycle. Mm-hmm. Nope, oh, let's take a look at the front badge as well. <clears throat> Imagine riding this down the street with this right behind it. Oh my gosh, how cool is that? Wow. Now this is the same, we'll call a control panel that you would see on the single tube, which is the number nine bike. <clears throat> and we'll discuss that here in just a moment as well. This should have a sticker right here on both sides, but it is missing. And we'll show you a sticker sheet so that way you know what that originally would have looked like. Battle cycle again down here, metal, double tube, and this whole entire bike, this whole frame can pretty much disassemble. Um, it's pretty unique. Also note, these are solid plastic tires. These are puncture proof tires. Uh, note mine has a little bit of rot that happens at the bottom of them. Also, this is a, a, a chrome or polished wheel and we'll take a look at the other side here in just a second all right here is the other side of the bike again decals on the front fork again the battle cycle name badge by murray again this is the 8384 and again it should have a sticker there so that is the number 10 spot murray again double tube frame bicycle All right, here is the number nine bicycle. And this is also put out by Murray. Now the badge says, I'm sorry, I should say the sticker says 83 here. But if you see, there's a target display ad that I'll show you. When I say I said display ad, look at that. I meant paper ad. And I can show you that says 1985. Now the 1985 ad says it has puncture proof tires. But as you can see here, these are air filled tires and chrome, definitely chrome wheels on this. Also, it is a red sticker. Let's take another look. It's got a front fork sticker, just like before. Red sticker up on the front. 
Although this time we have a different badge, a true badge. And this says, appropriately so, 1985. Let me get the glare so it doesn't show there. There you go. And that logo is appropriate for 1985. So, what I believe is that retailers had a choice as to how they wanted their bike assembled. Did they want it with regular pneumatic tires, air-filled, or did they want them with hard tires? Because why does the ad say puncture-proof tires? Anyway, this should have a sticker here. Most of the time that came off because, again, this is vinyl, easy to wear. <clears throat> Same sticker control pad on the back. How freaking cool is that? Man, I would love to ride this bike. Uh, this is awesome! I couldn't ride the other one. 225 pounds. Uh, yeah, okay, now I'm done with a little joy ride. <laughs> I was so excited when I first got it. Obviously, this has been restored. I took a lot of time to polish it up and get it back clean, but this is the other side. This is the red sticker version. Again, this is the 1985 version of the bike. Now, let's also take a minute here, and people are wondering, those that have asked in the past at least, wait a second, there's, these two bikes look the same. They're both Murray. We're going to do a comparison video, and we're going to show you number 10 and number 9 side by side. Next. All right, comparison time. Bike number 10 versus bike number 9. Okay, let's get a little closer look. First of all, from far away, we can see very clear. The 8384 version has yellow stickers. You can even kind of tell from this side that there's a double tube versus a single tube. But also uh, the red stickers are very, very, very dissimilar. Badge, I'm sorry, fork stickers are still different, co different colors, matching, but different colors. Again, let's take a look at the front. Yellow versus red, same size, but very noticeable differences on the badges. Battle Cycle by Murray, He-Man on the front badge in particular, versus the It's for Kids Murray badge. Also notable differences are very, very high polished chrome versus more of a satin. Also that has to do with the tire, which is a solid puncture-proof tire versus pneumatic or air-filled tire. So those are the subtle differences between the two. In all fairness, the rarity between number 10 and number 9 is subtle. I have only found a few of the pneumatic tires, so that's why it's a little bit up the scale versus the hard tire one. I've found a few more of these out there, so there's a comparison side by side of the two Murray Masters of the Universe bikes. Number 10 and number 9 in our countdown side by side. So here's the instruction booklet for the double tube and apparently the single tube bike bicycle as well. As we look through this, um, it features removing the tube for female versus male, but it represents double tube frames here later in the book. Let's get to where it shows that shows double tube right there okay there's a point and we can actually see check this out look at this there's the original receipt 69.97 74 dollars you got 53 cents so 73 47 for this bicycle in 1984 january 27th 1984 that's freaking wicked that this receipt is still in here for this bicycle. But uh, there was, so this is where, this is where, again, I believe that this is also an 80 for the single tube and the double tube. Every, every example of the double tube frame that I've seen is a solid rubber tire. But here they're talking about pneumatic tires. Well, if there's pneumatic tires here, Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it was like what I said for the single two bike. Maybe it was an option for the retailer to pick. I'm not sure, but it shows, you know, pneumatic tire in here, despite there being, um, 
the hard uh, puncture proof tires. So anyway, that is the book. There's the assembly even. It shows double tube. It shows all the parts and pieces and how it should go together. Training wheels. Maybe we can call them and get some support. Replacement parts. There we go. We'll go ahead and call them and get some replacement parts. <laughs> so yeah, that's it. Okay, since the original recording, I found out a couple of different things. First off, during the double tube description, I talked about it being that this frame can come apart completely. I misspoke. That's the single tube frame. That can come apart completely. Also, when talking about the single tube sticker being red and the uh, double tube being yellow, it actually doesn't matter. There are examples of double tubes having red stickers. There are also examples of the uh, single tube having red or yellow stickers as well. So they're fairly interchangeable. The other point of difference uh, that I, I failed to mention during the comparison portion of the two is the chain guard. That is definitely different. And the 85 Murray Kids version it's a plastic chain cover, and uh, on the metal double tube, sorry, on the double tube version, it is a metal chain guard. So those are a few different things that I've uh, noticed since I did the original recording and also some additional fact finding. On with the countdown. This is the Masters of the Universe Mighty Cycle from Tonka. Adult assembly required. It's got bold galactic designs and super sleek styling. Masters of the Universe Mighty Cycle with big, wide track wheels that let you master turns. Master spins. Master the action. Masters of the Universe Mighty Cycle. New from Tonka. All right, here it is, number eight in our countdown, the Tonka Mighty Cycle. Let's take a closer look at this. There are decals and stickers everywhere. We have them on the wheel hub. We have them on the seat. Now, the seat was adjustable through screws on the bottom, which we'll show in a moment, but the sticker was should have gone on the other side, no big deal, but take a look. We've got Skeletor and He-Man. Check out the control panel here in the middle. Power sword chamber. The decal's still here. The galaxy monitor. Now there would have been, and you see that you saw that in the TV commercial, a sticker here. You can almost still see the where it was, as well as one here. Also, since we're on the back end, let's take a look. We had, you know, exhaust panels, tail lights, whatever you want to call them, and of course, an official sticker on the back side. Now, since we're here, we might as well spin it around and take a look. It is the same stickers on that side. We can get a little closer look at He-Man. Big stickers down the sides, all the way, oops, all the way underneath. And there's where you can adjust the seating. You can see an extra hole towards the back there. But it comes around the front. You can see the sticker right there. I do have a little bit of sticker wear on the front, but still, it's still for the most part there and of course decals running down the a-frame or the forks i should say note the big wheel even though that's not their trademark but tonka and it's embedded into the wheel masters of the universe this is one of two we'll call them uh plastic tricycle Big wheel ask. We'll just stick with that. Very reticent of the big wheel brand, but different. And uh, this is produced by Tonka. So this here is the Tonka Mighty Cycle. And this comes in at number eight on our bicycle countdown. Coming in at number seven is the 1985 Tonka 16 inch Road Ripper Mighty Cycle. Want to give a special shout out to Jose for sending us the pictures and filming 
the video that we're about to watch right now. Yes, the Road Ripper. Oh, I wish I had this one myself. Look at that He-Man decal down the front fork. We've got Road Ripper. Oh, we've got a Masters logo on the back of the seat. Road Ripper down the frame. It looks like we've got a couple adjustment points. Oh, when it gets back, we'll see. To move the seat forward and back, a couple stickers in there. Really, really aggressive tread. We've got a really cool center console sticker. Masters big sticker in the logo. And let's see what we get to the front side here in just a second. We're going to see the most iconic handlebars ever of all the bikes. That Road Ripper head. Oh, amazing eyes. Reproduction stickers done by Tom Ace. And we'll come around the other side here. We're going to see a different front fork sticker. I believe it's going to wind up being Skeletor. And, oh, yep, there's a good look at the top handlebar sticker. Yep, and there is Skeletor down the side as well as a Road Ripper down the other side. Stickers on the wheels. Dang, this thing is cool. This is our number seven on the top ten Motu bicycles in our top ten countdown. The Road Ripper Mighty Cycle by Tonka. Coming in at number six in our countdown is the Estrella Minicicleta. This is an incredibly cool, unique, and very, very hard to find loose Masters of the Universe bike. I want to give a shout out to Motu Merchman for sending us these boxed pictures. He has one in his collection and kind enough to share these pictures with us. Also, shout out to eBay. The picture on your left came from eBay, current listed item, and uh, we can see that it comes in two pieces with a instruction sheet and a sticker sheet. What's great about it is we can see in great detail the sticker sheet. Uh, assembly instructions, we can't see the inside, but it looks to be pretty straightforward. The pin attaches to the main body, reattaching the front wheels and fork to the rear wheels. And it looks like our stickers are again, pretty self-explanatory. It looks like there are two rear taillight type stickers. Uh, there's a He-Man, the word He-Man sticker goes across the frame or the body of the bike. I am to assume the Masters of the Universe logo grows across the back side of the bike, since that's the only image we don't see. And we have two He-Man stickers, one that looks like a shield and an actual He-Man holding his power sword. Those look like the headlights for the Mini Cicleta. So uh, this is number six on our countdown. I wish I had one to show you physically. Hopefully these pictures will do it justice. And again, this is something that you don't find loose not you know played with loose i have actually never seen one for sale played with loose i'm not saying that hasn't happened just haven't seen one also um these do come up available in package so it's not super 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 rare or hard to find obviously there's one for you e on ebay right now but um i have seen them available over the years several different times and that is why the australia mini cicleta is number six in our Masters of the Universe Top 10 Bike Countdown. All right, coming in at number five on the Top 10 Motu Bicycle Countdown is the 1986 12 inch Roadmaster Tricycle. Now, there are a couple things that aren't quite accurate on this, and we'll point those out to you here in just a minute through, as we go through this. But let's take a close look at this bike right now. And, oh, man, this has some pretty cool, unique pieces on it. So first off, we have stickers, stickers on the rear wheel that correlates and matches to the sticker that's going up the frame. Now, both of those stickers and all the stickers on this bike are tricycle are vinyl with the exception of the master's sticker now this sticker was bad this whole tricycle was bad like really bad you know what let's take a quick let's show you how bad this tricycle really was okay so to get it back to looking like this I'll take it. So we got it restored. And when I say we, just me, myself, and I sit in the back garage using 
different basic household products. And one newer product I started using, Evaporust, which um, does work exceptionally well. So here's one of the first things, one of the major flaws is the front fender. The front fender should be sticking out a couple inches. It is broken off. It does have the exact same sticker. It would be on the front as well. But look at that. That's the same stickers on the front big wheel as well. <laughs> but one other flaw is the seat. The seat actually is not the proper seat, but I know someone who has one, Mr. Joe Ring. Whoop, whoop. He actually has one of these bad boys. And let's take a look at his and see what that seat looks like. Mm-hmm. That seat would look amazing. But for right now, I'm happy with what we got here. Now, there's one thing that we want to point out as we come to the front is that this tricycle, unlike many of the other bicycles, has a cross member. Now, that cross member is interesting. So we found the catalog, the 1986 Roadmaster catalog, and I have pictures of what this looked like brand new. But let's continue with the review first. All right, making our way back to the tricycle, the physical review, we take a look. We've got the Roadmaster badge up front, and we go around to the back side. We can see the step plate. Very well used, but rust free. Evaporust did the trick. Took that, but not the paint. The paint was gone where the rust was, and this is bare metal. It waxed nice and clean and good looking. Number five on the countdown. Let's go ahead and flip this bad boy around. All right, so this side is pretty much the same as the other, but uh, this sticker is actually a little bit better conditioned. So again, vinyl stickers on the back wheels, solid rubber all the way up the frame, vinyl, vinyl decal, paper sticker. This one was a little bit better, but still paper-based front fender, missing the front little clip there. And this actually has another crack right there. Interestingly, that fender is silver. It's faded in that weather checked, but it's a silver. As from what I could tell, <clears throat> this fender was available in 85 and in 86, but it does look to be only available in gray for the master's bike. Now there are white ones available, which I plan on finding, and I'll paint it silver to make it match, and I'll get some decals to re re reproduce the stickers, but Finding a silver one's gonna be quite a challenge, but I'll just settle for a white one. Oh, as soon as I find one. There it is. Oh, and again, missing the shield up front, but that shield is so unique. And since we talked about it in, earlier in the video, that would be a really good time to go over some of the highlights of the shield and show you some of the specialty information that I've uncovered about that. All right, as we take a closer look, this is a page from the 86 catalog. And yes, you can see a Shira tricycle as well. I also have a couple images of what the boxed tricycles would look like. Now, granted, those aren't Masters of the Universe, but at least gives us a good representation of what these Roadmasters bikes look like new in package. Let's get a closer look at the Masters of the Universe text, though, first, before we go any further. All right, so as we take a closer look at the tricycle, it's beautiful for one, we can notice a few things. Well, first, let's read the text, okay? It says, wide, stable rear deck, fully hammered play safe edges, full 360 degree weld at head, tubular steel head, tubular steel backbone, nylon bearing pedal drive, chrome MX, MX motocross, uh -huh, handlebar, play safe fender and saddle. Notice I called it a saddle, not a seat as I called it earlier. 12 inch front and seven inch rear mag wheels, cobalt blue finish, masters of the universe graphics and play safe plastic shield, which is what we're going to talk about here next, and ages two to four. Now, when we look at this shield, it's very, 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 very similar to the HG crossplay shields. Um, you know, they have the strap on the back of it where you put your hand through. But when we're, when we're looking at this, this, it doesn't look, it doesn't look right. If you look really, really, really close and at the shield, and let's take a close, close, close look at that, you can see that it has it look like zip ties. It looks like there are zip ties holding this particular shield onto the cross members of that handlebar. Now, 
I had said earlier that I have never physically seen one of these in the wild. And that's true. However, digging through some archives, thanks to Justice Curry, we did find an example of this. Maybe it was two or three years ago at Kane County. And take a look at this. That is the only 100% complete example of the tricycle that I have ever seen or found. Again, thanks to Justice Curry for taking a picture of this. And it was I was correct. Uh, the pictures were accurate. The shield is zip tied onto the cross member. What is also interesting about this is the stickers are different than the HG shield. And the other difference is really, really, really cool. And I, I want this knowledge out there because I'd love to find one. I have a sneaking suspicion there are people sitting on this shield and have no idea thinking it's one thing and another. The Roadmaster Tricycle Shield has eight little tiny holes drilled in it. Not a single hole that has a punch, you know, a rivet to hold in the straps that were the other style shield. This had two little holes drilled in it on the X's of the shield, so that way it could be um, zip-tied onto the handlebar. They just had to make sure that the stickers were in the right spot before they put it on there or zip-tied it on. But it allowed us, you to have a lot of flexibility and have the shield rotate, whatever, and then you put the stickers on it like that. So the other thing that's really interesting about the shield is that it was, like we said, it was zip-tied on. This was not meant to be taken off and played with. Maybe that's why it was called Play-Safe Shield. And the last little fun thing about this picture is if you zoom in really, really, really close, you can see the asking price, which, in my opinion, is a little bit out of the, the realm of reasonable offers or prices. If it was in box like we saw earlier, yeah, I could see that. But hey, to each their own, ask away, and more power to them. Uh, but it's a beautiful thing. Love seeing that thing. And that is our number five bike in the Masters of the Universe Top 10 Bicycle Countdown. Yes, coming in at number four is the 1986 16-inch bicycle by Vivi. This was a European release, and um, you know we'll take a closer look. There's a couple things that aren't quite right on it, and we'll point those out, but let's get a closer look at this. So we noticed that we've got shield training wheels, <laughs> color matched by spoke wheels, and of course those are pneumatic tires. We've got amazing decals, plastic chain guard, plastic pedals, but it is a free spinning. Oh, that means it's got both front and rear brakes, but of course, metal armor, man. 1986, it says down there as well. We've got this Talon Fighter look to it. Point dread feel. The seat feels like the same. But as we work up, we get to, oh, sorry, we should probably take a look here. Bicicleta, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, oh, no, bicicleta. Looks like French, made in, what does that say? Italy, yes, okay, so this was made in Italy. Now, the reason why I had to take a look at it was that this was available in Italy, it was available in France, and also Australia, I believe. But let's take a close look at the shield. Now the shield has the name of the company on it. It also has another sticker here. Of course, it's also in French, see? So what What's interesting here is that there's also a smaller version of the bike, which is in the countdown, and we'll take a look. But I want to show you something in the back. The American Shields have straps on it. This has a handle. Now, the handle is broken on it, but what's really cool about that, not cool as broken, but what's cool about their method of style is it actually mounted between the handlebars. So it actually had grooves on it so it would set right up here up high sorry i didn't have the camera up high so it would set right in here kind of like this 
And I've got some pictures that I can show you of how one should look. And we'll show those on, an, on uh, the future here. Now that's where some of this discussion could actually come into play too. This is number four on the countdown. But number three on the countdown is its junior companion. And we'll show that bike here in the review. So uh, continuing on with number four, we've got pneumatic brakes. We've got a little bit of dust here from some construction we just had done. Again, plastic detail, plastic uh, guard, fender. It also came with a power sword. Now, this is not the original power sword. The original power sword was a little bit smaller, and it was this color, but it was solid piece. It was one solid piece. So uh, this is the, uh, obviously, this is the one side. Let's go ahead and take a step back, and uh, we'll take a look at the other side here. Oh, before we do so, note front and rear brakes. The other model, the other VV on our countdown does not have that. So let's go ahead and take a look at the other side. All right, we flipped the bike around. Let's go ahead and take another close look. We are missing a decal right there on the fender, but we still get a really good uh, idea what it should be. The sticker there should be on the eye, but eh, who cares, not getting too picky. We've got more decals. Closer look here of the tag, not the pedal, sorry. Closer look at the tag. Now, there is one other thing that's missing, and that is right here. Right here should be a little plastic cover, and it just is to protect this. It's a tensioner for the uh, brakes. So it's a pretty cool system, really, really, really different from what we had here in the US. And I gotta tell you, you know, this is tough as far as aesthetics go, as far as what looks really cool, I, I gotta say this bike probably looks the coolest out of all the bikes they've ever done in the top 10. Well, regardless, any Mochi bike. But as far as rarity goes, we know a few examples of this. We know a few examples of the next one we're about to show. So it's just down a little bit on our countdown. It's in our number four position on our top 10 Masters of the Universe bikes. Coming in at number three is the 1984 VV 14-inch bicycle. Shout out to Motu Lembo for providing us with these amazing pictures of this amazing bike. All right, taking a look at number three on our countdown. This bike has a lot going for it. Oh my gosh, this bike has some really cool things. We can see a play shield. Looks like a toy sword. I mean, looks like there's a decal on the, on the chain guard. I mean, this thing is... Oh my God. It, I mean, it reminds me of Talon Fighter. It really has a Talon Fighter feel to it. It's got front fenders, rear fenders. It looks like there's plastic cover guards over the fork. This thing is just completely loaded with de uh, details. Um, all sorts of really cool aspects of this bike. Um, <laughs> man, this is a cool one. I, uh, I can't wait to add this to the collection someday. Uh, it looks like we have a single handbrake. And uh, let's go ahead and take a... a look at some of the other pictures that we have with this. As we can see, this particular bike is brand new. It doesn't look like it's ever been played with and we get to see something really special and unique here. We're getting a look at the instruction booklet. It's technically, this is the sticker instruction guide. So this is telling us where to put the stickers on the bike. It also comes with its own air pump for the tires because the tires are pneumatic, air filled, not puncture proof type tires. And you also got an assembly tool with this particular kit. I just think it's really cool to see something like this preserved for this long, unused. And I mean, it's great, it's fantastic. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the other side of this instruction sheet and see what we have. All right, on the other side of the instruction seat, we do see a little bit of fading, a little bit of uh, probably mildew over years of it just being paper and absorbing whatever, but. Uh, we can see a little bit better angle of the air pump, a little different angle on the tool as well, but we see the assembly instructions. And 
you get a really unique look at the VV, uh, BC Clet logo, and the He-Man on Battle Cat. So this is the assembly instruction sheet, air pump, and an assembly tool. Uh, it's just the back side of the other sheet. And of course, since this is unused, he has unused sticker sheets as well. This is amazing. So damn cool to see this. Um, all the stickers, all of them are there. And uh, as we saw, the front side of this, this instruction booklet tells you exactly how that goes. So seeing the unused sticker sheet is spectacular with something like this, especially from 1984. All right, so seeing a brand new version of this bike is just spectacular. But as you may have recognized, this bike does look shockingly familiar to our number four bike in our countdown. Well, that's because this is commonly referred to as the junior version of the bike. This is only 14 inches versus the, we'll call it the adult, even though it's not our larger kid version, is actually a 16 inch bike. So let's take a second here and let's just go quickly through the differences between the number four bike and our number three bike in our countdown. Yes, number two on the Motu bike countdown is the Tonka Mini Mighty Cycle. That's right, Tonka made a mini Mighty Cycle. Mini Mighty Cycle. It's just fun to say. I like to say it that way. But there's going to be a debate here. Why is it number two versus number one? Well, you're going to find out here in just a second. And that is that there is no physical representation of the Mini Mighty Cycle. However, Thanks, big thanks and shout out to Toys from the Past stores, two of them, from Lincoln, Nebraska. Again, Toys from the Past. They happen to have a box. No mini Mighty Cycle, but they have the box. And they were kind enough to send me pictures of it front, side, and all around so we can see this. And, uh, okay, let's go ahead and take a close look at this Tonka Mini Mighty Cycle, at least the front of it. And let's get a good look at it. Yes! Look at that box art! Oh, I so wish I could get my hands on this bike. Love to get a box someday, too. But let's take a look at this, okay? So we can see that on the bike itself, oh, you know, let's not ignore the Castle Grayskull in the corner, how just, oh, it just screams. Uh, we can see that this is obviously a junior mini Mighty Cycle, and it's for ages one and a half to four. But what I really like is some of the attention to detail, some extra things that tie it into the the act, the, the regular Mighty Cycle. And you can see the stickers are similar. You've got stickers on the rear that's kind of wrapping around. We've got a stickers on the hubs, uh, will look like hubs, on the front mini big wheel, uh, Masters logo on the front. But there's more. There's some text on this box that, you know what, we got to get a closer look at to really, really understand what was cool about this bike. All right, so as we zoom in close, we can see, which by the way, the text on the front of the box is the same as the text on the bottom of the box. There isn't anything different between the two, but we can see something here that I, I truly missed until I was doing the editing for this video. You know, it's got safe road hugging action for the younger child, features exciting Masters of the Universe design, which it does, it's great. Nine inch direct drive front wheel, which is fantastic. It's got a wide track rear wheels and non-slip pedals. Of course, that's spectacular. Uh, special contoured seat and easy grip handlebars. Well, of course, why not? Makes action motor sound when pedaled? Mind blown. <laughs> I was just like, no. <laughs> this, thing, this thing had some type of little, maybe it's on the little star thing that we see on the front big wheel. I don't know. But this thing made motor sounds like we're sticking our cards inside of the, you know, trading cards or playing cards inside of the rear wheel and making that. Brrr. Oh, such a cool toy. Really want to try to find one of these things. And speaking of finding one of these things, this is really interesting. Take a look at this box. Notice anything unique about it? Yes, it has the shipping information on it, which is pretty cool. But no, I was more or less referring to the word tomatoes. That's right. This box was found in a garden shed in Nebraska, and it was used for tomatoes at some point. So the point being, if you love to hunt and you love to try to find things, 
leave no stone unturned. If you have an opportunity to go knock on doors, if a friend is willing to let you look around, look around, be polite, but leave no stone unturned and uh, you might just get really lucky. All right, so you got to look at the box. We have an idea what this is and um, there isn't a physical one for us to look at. But the reason why I have it down on number two is that and again, there's going to be debate on the when we see number one. Is that there's this is Tonka box. This looks to be mass production. Um, it does not look to be a foreign exclusive. It looks to be like it was a U.S. release. So the likelihood of it only being a couple or a few hundred is probably not likely. The likelihood of it is it's, it's a small junior size, and they got really, really, really beat. Um, and I just don't think that they survived. I mean, how many of these vintage, regardless of the toy line, forget Masters for a second, how many of these minis do we still see around? Not that many. Um, not loose, that's the point. You see some of the uh, Brazilian mini cicletas because they're in box still, they were new, but you don't see any loose played with. So um, at least that's my theory, and that's why it's number two in our countdown for Masters of the Universe bicycles. Yes, we are here. It is that time. This is the number one Motu bicycle in our countdown. And man, it's a beauty. This bike has some crazy history behind it. And actually, some of which we don't fully understand. So, this is the number one bike in our countdown, the 1983 Tonka by Headstrom 16-inch motocross sidewalk bike. That is a mouthful, and that's why it's number one in our countdown. No, that is not why, but we will talk a little bit about this bike a little more in detail, and let's get into taking a really close look at this bike, and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll hopefully get some answers, and hopefully you guys can give us some as well. So... What you can see right here is that this is a coaster brake system, but it's also in French, huh? Sacre bleu. Yes, it is in French and English. This bike was made in Canada. And um, again, it when you look this bike up, the pictures that you find will be of this bike, as best we can tell. It doesn't matter the setting, where it's at. We lined up the pictures of the decals, the peels, where things were. This seems to be the only bike in this condition with everything the way it should be. I believe there is a sticker decal missing off the back, um, like a brake light. So, what does this Tonka Headstrom logo mean i i don't know it's a collaboration obviously we can see some some uh, some uh some uh correlations between different products so if we just pause really quick let's go ahead and look at the dukes of hazard bicycle exact same name but let's go ahead and take a look at that picture okay when we look at that picture that's Headstrom MX for their motocross. Well, why is it this? It's just different, right? It's just different. Here we can see trademarks for 83. Now, to be fair, to be fair, we don't know if it really is 83. I have a sneaking suspicion it's a little bit um, earlier of a model or, you know, 84, 85. But this is what we have to go by. There are only three... I only have been able to uncover three pictures or examples of this bike. This being the one example that we have here. Let's take a look at this council. Oh my God. How flipping cool is that? Now there's a bolt right, right there. That's what holds this in place. There was a significant crack here, which I mended as best I could from the back side. And I cleaned this all really well. But this is also a plastic seat. And I'm totally digressing and all over the place. I'm sorry, but plastic seat, no sticker on the back here. Really cool front chrome. It just, it's a really cool bike. It's got eight hangers. 
this is a this is a motocross this is a motocross bike it does have street sidewalk tires now i've noticed something when they say sidewalk bikes they tend to be hard or you know puncture proof tires i think that's in part because it's a smoother ride thinking sidewalks as opposed to uneven pavement or uneven streets and whatnot but <clears throat> let's go ahead and flip this over and we'll continue to talk about some of the mystery mystery and questions behind it all right let's go ahead and take a closer look at this other side of the bike here our number one in the countdown this is so cool but what do we notice right away on this side this is where the french comes into play so this this bike i found one example of just the frame just this blue frame it had the same you know tonka by headstrom sticker on the front in the barn rafters none of this plastic stuff it had the seat um uh, i don't know no handlebars just just the frame sitting up there that's the that's one example the only other example that we've been able to find is an auction that happened quite a few years ago and it had listed it as one of 300 so are there really only 300 of these bikes made? Were there only 300 of these bikes? Are there more of them? If they are, they're probably up in Canada. Um, maybe some have made it over to France. Some have made it down to the States, I'm sure. But the reality of it is, is through the years, and I do mean years of hunting and, and collecting Masters of the Universe stuff, only seen those three examples. So while this is the number one on the countdown it does have there's questions if you guys have answers other examples if you can tell me hey what what the sticker looks like in the back or no it's this year oh you know there, there's more of this it was in this catalog please contact us send us a message let me know because it's not just for me because this this is fun this is great stuff this is the number one bike in the top 10 video this is awesome sorry i get a little excited all right let's take one closer look all right, yes, again, hard sidewalk tires, puncture proof. This does have the back brake system, so you just push backwards. Different on any of the bikes, this one has black pedals and sprocket, which is pretty cool. Again, the decal, muscular, French side. You can see a little bit of the text there. Control panel, again, nothing on the back. And again, our number one bike, the 1983 Tonka by Headstrom, 16-inch motocross sidewalk bike. Okay, so we just had a visual tour of the number one bicycle for Masters of the Universe, and there's still a lot of questions, right? So while I discussed showing some of those points and thing, points of differentiation, it's French, it's uh, English, it's a very unique product and then it's a Tonka Headstrom product. That badge is the only badge that I can find like that. So how did it come to be? You know, Tonka is, you know, merged with other companies. Headstrom, I'm not sure where they're currently at at the moment. I'm sure they're part of some other company at, the, uh, at, at this time. But, you know, those type of things, are there really only or were there really only 300 of these made? Was it truly only available in Canada through Canadian distribution channels? It would make sense that that is the case because it is in French and in, in English. Um, you know, but but why on the Dukes of Hazard bike the year before, uh, is it just the Hedstrom MDX badge, right? So there's a lot of questions. It's the same frame, same everything. Were there really, again, were there only 300 of these things made? I don't know. But hopefully doing something like this and bring into light the top 10 bicycles, uh, we can find some answers. So I hope you guys enjoy this content. I hope you guys enjoy this video. Continue to like, subscribe, and share because we really want to get better answers. I say we, I mean the collective community because not only myself, but the fans of Masters of the Universe would love to know, and, and I would too. So again, thank you all for watching. Continue to subscribe, like, follow, and share, and we will get back with you on our next video. Who knows? Real soon. Mighty Cycle! I think what I love doing is...
Oh, yeah, buddy. Woo! See you later. Bye-bye.